This is a New Holland L228. It's, uh, what we're going to go over is some of the operational controls of this machine. And for the most part, most of the New Holland skid loaders uh, are pretty much similar. So what we're talking about here will be similar on other models. This particular machine is set up with high flow hydraulics. These two top couplers are larger couplers and they are used for uh, high flow attachments. The lower three couplers here, the center one is the case drain. The outside two are the standard flow connectors. Down here, this is a 14 pin connector. It's used for attachments such as a cold planer or things that have multiple functions and you want to switch between each one of them. Every pivot on the machine has got grease fittings on them, so you, you would grease it at all those particular points. The axles also have grease fittings on them. They usually get greased about every 500 hours. You won't normally grease those except for uh, probably when you change a set of tires and you'll grease them at that point, and that's when you'll take the wheels off to get to those fittings. In the front also, the bucket latch, and this one is a manual one, so it has a pair of levers that you would pull up to release the bucket and get onto your next attachment. In the back here is where you would be checking your engine oil and hydraulic oils and do your fills. That is done easily here. The cap over on this side is your diesel fuel fill. This yellow one here, that's your engine oil check. Your engine oil fill is in the center, in the middle of the engine here. Hydraulic oil fill is off on this other side here. And there is a hydraulic oil level sight glass on the side inside of here. And uh, you do that check with the loader on the ground. Your battery is down below here, and you could, if you have to jump onto that for a, a remote fuel tank, DC powered or something, you can access it there, or if you have to jump start it for some reason, you can start it there. Block heater cord is tied in this area if you choose to use that. Under the side here, there's a cover. Uh, inside that cover, you, that's where you would access your battery also. Your engine oil filter and your engine oil drain are all underneath there. On the back door is your fuel filter and primer pump. On this side, very similar to the other side, uh, all the pivots are greasable, have fittings, the axles have the uh, fittings for, for greasing. These two points here, if this machine was um, having counterweights on it, that's where they'd be bolted on. Now we'll move into the interior of the cab. This particular machine has got the dual arm wiper blade, which allows it to cover more area of the windshield on a single pass instead of a single arm that would, would not necessarily cover your full range of sight that you would like to see from inside the cab. It is also a lockable cab with a key. First thing you do when you get inside the cab, install your seat belt, which is behind you on your uh, left side. If you happen to be getting in the machine and sitting too long, so I can go to start the machine, you may have to unbuckle, get out of the seat, and reset down to reset the computer so the machine will be able to start. On your left hand control, we have a series of buttons. This is your two speed button, your high and low. These two buttons here, cylinder two and cylinder three, are for your 14 pin connector, and those are, are run just for that connector for your auxiliary hydraulics. The lower one with the arrows on it, that is your turn signals for right and left. On your other control, this is also uh, function number one uh, for your 14 pin connector. This is the switch that turns the, the connector box on to activate all of those other functions. This switch here is a variable switch or you can lock it on in either direction. That is for your remote hydraulics, whether it be high pressure or high flow or standard flow. It's for all the, the functions out of that valve bank. Above that is your hand throttle. That sets your RPM of your engine. In cold weather, when you first start it up, if it's uh, extremely cold, no matter where you put this, it will maintain an idle speed. It will not rev up until the engine is at a certain temperature that will allow the engine to go without getting damaged. The next switch below that is here is your light switch, which is for headlights and running lights. This next switch here is for your parking brake. Say you stop and you want to set the brake, but you don't want to get out of the seat right away. Get out of the seat, parking brake automatically goes on, but this will allow you to, to set the brake without having to get out of the seat. This four button pad here, to start the machine, you would hit power first, then you would hit start and the engine would start up. 
and in order for anything to, to function you'd have to hit RPA. If you had a function like a water pump or something that you wanted the machine to sit still and run without you being in it, you could hit this auxiliary button and that would enable the auxiliary hydraulics to run and not have to be in the seat. These are also your, your site class readings for what you have for hydraulic temperature, water temperature, and your fuel gauge levels. Above that is your hour meter, and then these are your warning lights for any function that might be uh, going bad. Currently you're seeing parking brake is on, and there's an operator in the seat, but no seat belt on it th at this time. Your other control side, starting at the bottom, is your windshield wiper and washer. Above that is HF and HP. This machine isn't equipped with high pressure, high flow, it's just equipped with standard high flow. So no matter which position this one goes into, it will only be high flow, standard high flow, not high pressure. The one above that, this is the warning flasher. That's for your four ways, which turns your turret signals into four way flashers. The one above it here is a strobe light. That activates the plug in the back of the cab, a magnet mount a strobe light to your roof. The light above it, all that does is tells you that uh, the high speed is on when you're uh, running the switch down below. It just activates and uh, illuminates. Above it here is your turn signal indicators. It tells you whether your flashers are going or whether your uh, turn signals are on. Above that is your fan speeds for your heater and your temperature control for your heater. Moving to your side windows, as they get dirty, you may want to take them out and clean them. They're easily opened by squeezing this handle and sliding it back. In front, there's two knobs. One is for, for uh, unlocking the slide and the other one unlocks the latch. You see a window here that's green. As you pull that back, it releases and turns to red. That allows you to lower this rail and take the glass out if you'd like to do so to clean windows. You can do the same thing in the back. Move it forward with the same type of a window, and at that point, it'll lower the rear one, and you can take the rail out and remove the glass complete to, to clean it or to leave it out for summertime. Behind the operator's seat is a yellow triangle. That is a safety e e exit, so if you turn the machine over and it happens to land on the front of it where you can't get out your normal exit, you can pull that triangle and release the window and climb out through the back of the cab. Behind the seat on the left side is your windshield washer fill point, which you fill from inside the cab. Straight ahead of that, there's a red button. This button here is used, say the engine, uh, you ran it out of fuel and the loaders were up in the air, you couldn't open the door. You didn't want to pull the rear window open to get out because you'd, uh, you'd rather not do that and have to put it back in. You can pull that button and it will lower the lower arms back to the ground so you can exit safely. On the opposite side of the seat is a red lever and that gets turned. When you turn it in toward yourself and you have the lower arms up in the air, it activates a safety latch so that you can work on the machine without the loader being on the ground and not have to worry about it uh, coming down on top of you. The two stick levers, left and right, are for your forward and reverse travel since this is a hand and foot control. So this will drive the, the right hand side of the machine and the other one will drive the left hand side of the machine. The two pedals on the floor run your loader operations. Uh, one side runs your bucket and one side runs your loader lift. In the event that you want to run this with your cab door off, you have to unplug this plug, but when you do that, that makes it so the loader won't operate because it senses the door is open. It will not run. So you have to activate it again with this uh, bypass plug and put that in place. To remove the door, it's just a matter of unhooking a few things like that and lifting the door off. It's ready to come off. Just lift it off the hinges and your, your cab no longer is enclosed. All cab models come equipped with, uh, with a radio and a port for plugging in your iPod.